arguments brought by scientists when they discuss the ability of humans compared to other species is our creativity. Creativity allows us to communicate and thus learn collectively. One of the main proofs to this argument is our ability of writing, passing our knowledge through generations and developing what is called collective memory. The thousands of shelves which make up the library of mankind gives us insights into our history, going all the way back to 3000 before Christ when the first writing tablets are said to have been produced. But today, we won't focus on the scientific or historical nature of writing, but on what is maybe the best example of human creativity, fiction, and how it um, develops and mirrors our culture. Shifts in narratives, themes and genres mimic the changes of humanity itself as fictional situations are portals which transport us to different societies. If I was to draw a timeline of literature, maybe I wouldn't be able to fit it around the Earth's circumference since it is ultimately as old as mankind. Right at the beginning of our story, we have legends, myths and folk tales plotting allegorical judgments of life. Um, if we take ancient Greece, for example, myths explain social and natural phenomena, gods judge human behaviors, and heroes like Hercules convey moral ideals. This traces Greek culture. Such types of tales were present in many of the great civilizations, the Persians, the Incas, the Romans, and surviving through time and still serving as an artistic inspiration today. Literature and fiction survive through time. And it amazes me how we're so familiar with mythological figures or come to know certain aspects of Shakespearean plays even without having read them. Literature and fiction have become parts of our human legacy. And the way we engage with it has essentially become part of being a human. Maybe this supports Carl Jung's theory about collective unconscious, that a deepest segment of our unconsciousness is genetically inherited Maybe as humans inherit the practice of writing and a certain appreciation for it, just like we inherit our, crea our creativity. We all have a certain knowledge about literature and engage with it in some way, even if not enjoying it. But I will propose another theory, collective fictional consciousness, our collective memory of fiction. Let me elaborate. Fiction is based in realities, showing shifts in thoughts and culture, but it also produces culture in the sense that it has become a means of interpretation of our reality. The fact it produces and reflects knowledge has made this part of our collective memory, or our fictional memory. Um, today, certain fictional situations have become part of our knowledge and we are able to recognize um, quotes, characters and plots of older texts in those which outline our reality, showing how fiction is really interconnected. Allusions, intertextuality, and really a chain of inspiration has created a fictional timeline, our collective fictional consciousness. And today, I'll attempt to build this timeline, starting with a true classic, Shakespeare. The Shakespearean era, our golden age of England, the height of English Renaissance seen through the flourish of literature, um, through the words of Christopher Marlowe, um, Edmund Spencer, and Shakespeare himself during the stable periods of Elizabeth I's rule, a period of navigation and exploration, and of moderate internal peace between Catholics and Protestants, royalists and parliamentarians, both, both conflicts which had doomed England years before and would so in years to come. Shakespeare witnesses this transition and perfectly illustrates it in his work. We have stability giving way to confusion in plots of plays like A Midsummer Night's Dream, resembling what was happening in England at the time, an exploration of colonialism in The Tempest, deep religious undertones in Romeo and Juliet, for example, seen through the importance of Father Lawrence's figure. Experts summarize his tremendous success by two main points. First, the obvious quality of his language and also, and maybe most importantly, his human themes. Shakespeare perfectly portrays the late 16th and early 17th century British society. But in order to depict what was his now, he looks back, gathering inspiration from earlier plays, 
on popular tales and even mythology. The stable period soon gave rise to great turmoil following Elizabeth I's death. We have religious conflicts surrounding the Reformation, and changes in monarchy, and a civil war which all dragged through the 17th century. In this scenario, we see the rise of poets like John Milton, considered Shakespeare's youngest contemporary, whose most famous work, Paradise Lost, um, contains interpretations of the political and religious forces in England. Just last year, historians have found what they believe to have been Milton's copy of Shakespeare's folio, carefully annotated. Here starts our evidence interconnection. This leads us into the 18th century, with British writing to a dominant colonial power with its extensive overseas empire. The Age of Enlightenment, which led to a wave of revolutions all throughout Europe, triggering British involvement in major conflicts, especially with Napoleon's friends. One of the main fictional productions of that time is Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, a satirical novel mocking 8th century British society. Swift creates comically cruel and absurd fictional cultures, which advocate for social change and criticize um, the exploitation of people by the ruling British aristocrats. Here we see a more reactionary type of literature, um, criticizing reality and calling for change, aspects which will be really important later on in our timeline. But the Age of Enlightenment also led to, ma to major scientific discoveries, which culminated in the Industrial Revolution, um, which caused major social and economic changes all throughout the world. In literature, we see this through the shift from Romanticism to Realism, shown in books by Charles Dickens, for example. But in the 19th century, we also witnessed the start of the women's rights movement, not only through the activism of figures like Susan B. Anthony, but also by the widespread ex exposure of female authors. In the 19th century, we come to know the Bronte sisters, um, Jane Austen, Mary Shelley, all who open up fiction to the role of female imagination. Um, through the portrayal of gender themes and the introduction of fe powerful female protagonists. One of the major examples of this transition is Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. The book basically talks about a young governess who falls in love with her master, um, who has a really dark past. But the book is not at all focused on the romance, because what is really interesting is Jane's emotional and intellectual growth throughout the novel only giving up to love when she becomes her lover's equal. The book's complex thematic, um, tackling gender roles, poverty, and religion, is empowered by Bronte's powerful allusions, um, not only to Greek and Roman mythology, but also to Milton's Paradise Lost, creating a powerful dialogue with 17th century literature. In the 19th century, we also see a new take on Shakespeare, um, who, at, who achieves the worldwide recognition we see today and is established as a true classic, as his work was becoming more and more accessible. Shakespeare greatly influences a literary projection of this time, and we can see this in Jane Eyre through Bronte's poetic depiction of love and fate, resembling what Shakespeare had done before. We now arrive in the 20th century, a turning point in world's history, a century of political and economic changes as a world abandons imperialism and builds what we know as the capitalist system. Humanity witnesses two great wars, a global economic depression, and a ideological conflict between socialism and capitalism, which culminated in what we know as the Cold War. In this scenario, we see a new type of literary production which, in my opinion, is perfectly depicted by the French term literature engagée, or less commonly known as literature of commitment. Art is no longer for art's sake, it has a social and moral responsibility. Here we see on literary classics like the great Gatsby discussing the implications of capitalism, uh, alluding to the American dream. 
um, the issue of the rise of communism in animal farm, an allegory to the Russian Revolution, and a discussion of the social outcomes of the Great Depression in Grapes of Wrath. In the 20th century, we also see a new wave of satirical novel, resembling what we have seen before with Gulliver's Travels. Um, we have Brave New Worlds criticizing technological advancements and consumerism, relying on powerful allusions to Shakespeare to explore human emotions. Um, we have George Orwell's 1984, which condemns totalitarian regimes. Literature is now, more than ever, a mechanism of questioning and criticizing reality and advocating for change. The bold fiction of the 20th century um, paved the way to the new contemporary age. Um, Reality-based stories, um, sometimes skeptical or ironic, may be viewed through a personal perspective, but addressing universal themes through normally character-driven plots. Literature is now, more than ever, human. But in order to make it human, Authors are constantly referring back to the literary timeline to gather inspiration. Um, and as we can see by my somewhat successful demonstration, this timeline is not linear at all, but rather a complex web of influence and intertextuality, a mind map. Fiction has its own time, made up of an elaborate system of influence, as authors um, add on to existing ideas brought forward by our collective fictional consciousness. The new branches of this mind map expand our fictional common knowledge as we, as fiction itself, are trying to interpret our reality. You, you only need to look at some of the most famous work from, of the 21st century to really notice this interconnection. The theme of Greek mythology in Percy Jackson, 19th century novels like Pride and Prejudice, inspiring novels like um, Bridget Jones Diary, 20th century satirical literature giving birth to modern day bestsellers like The Hunger Games or Divergence and the numerous repurposed ideas in the Harry Potter series. Our fast changing society um, is expanding our fictional world, creating more interconnect interconnected and dynamic narratives, both depicting and enriching our shared knowledge. Our Collective fictional consciousness is important for us to understand where we have come from, but also where we are heading to. Thank you.